hello everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the third module of unix and in this module we have uh, the main topic which is api and after that we have the process and the process control which is uh, pretty easy so we'll be discussing both of these topics and let's get started and if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so the first topic is about the apis and after finishing the all the topics we'll be discussing the previous questions so let's get started <coughs> Here we have the first uh, which is the general file APIs okay. So uh, basically what is an API? API means uh, application programming interface and suppose that you are the user here and you have the uh, server here okay. And if you want to get some data from the server you will use an API. API acts as an interface between the application and the server okay. Application programming interface okay. So there are few types of uh, APIs like uh, we will be discussing the types of API later. First, the types of the files which uh, can be um, used in the Unix and the POSIX system are um, regular file, directory file, FIFO file, block device, character device and symbolic link. Okay. So there are APIs to manipulate and create files. The name is, uh, the name is sufficient for the function of it like open is used to open the file and this is the syntax. We have the path name and the access mode as well as the permission. These are the various modes, uh, the read only, write only and uh, read and write. Okay. So and so this is all about, uh, so this is what uh, we'll be discussing for each of the functions, the name and what is its function, the syntax of it and other various modes. Okay. So we have the next one create and this is the syntax for it. We have the path name and the mode means uh, which path name we have to create and what mode we have to create like reading or writing and all. Okay. And next we have the read which uh, fetches the uh, size of the block from the memory and, and uh, reads the file. So we have the f description, the description of the file and the buffer in which we will store the um, whatever we fetched and this is the size of the file. Okay. And we have the write function in the same way we have the same uh, parameters here as well. The close function which uh, file we want to close that, uh, that description and f uh, cntl. cntl is helps uh, to uh, set the flags in the queries like uh, we have to open the flag or close the flag or uh, return or do any other function. So this is the syntax here we have the f description and the cmd command means what command you want to perform. Some of the commands are like get, set and file description or file length and this is one example for read only file and lseek means suppose that we have the file here and inside that file uh, this, there are many lines okay suppose that we want to copy this particular amount of file the cursor will be here okay lseek what it will do it will set the offset to where we want okay and after that we can copy the uh, line of code okay for that lseek is used for that we have the parameters uh, the description of the file and the offset position and whens whens will uh, whens can have uh, three parameters here current set or end which will uh, be the reference location for the beginning or end of the file okay next we have the next we have the link and unlink which uh, links and unlinks the file and we have the rename file which renames the file a stat which uh, gives the status of the file and access which um, lets us access the file if there is permission to access and if you have to change the file access we can use a chmod or fchmod there is a slight difference between each of these one uh, takes the path name other takes the file description okay so whichever way we want we can access it and this we are discussing in the module 2 the chmod in the same way we have the owner changing functions chown and fchown and lchown okay this is also used uh, the for the same purpose using different syntax for different um, uh, situations and in the parameter list we will be specifying the user id and the group id by using which we have to change the um, user uh, owner and finally we have the uTime function which modifies the access time means suppose that I opened a file at Sunday uh, morning and I can use the uTime function to change that to Saturday evening like that okay that um, change the access uh, time of the file and the timestamps of the file can be changed by using the path name and the time means which time I have to set for the um, particular file okay. The next one is uh, file and record locking okay suppose that there is a file here there are multiple users okay and uh, each of them is accessing the file and uh, when we edit the file some of them will uh, reach here and they cannot see the changes happening here okay so for that what we are doing is we are um, locking the file okay like a record is a set of files so that's also uh, basically the same thing and what we do is we'll uh, lock the file means at, uh, at a time only one user can use the file read or write and after uh, he finishes uh, the task uh, after that the next user will be able to access the file in that way no user will miss out any information okay 
that is about file and record locking next we have the file apis directory file api the same thing as we have done for the device file api we are doing for the directory files also and we can do mkdir make the directory in the particular mode and by using that we can access the uh, files um, we can open the file read the file close and um, rewind the file to the first position or wherever we want and we can use the tell and seek functions to be to get the and set the directory paths okay and whenever we connect any keyboard or mouse to the function it uh, makes a device file and to access the information of that we have to use api so that is known as the device file apis and the to create the device file apis we have to use mk node the path name and the mode and the device id of that uh, connected device okay by using that we can create a device file and by using that api we can access the information FIFO file APIs means first in first out okay so in the FIFO it will wait until another uh, suppose that in FIFO one process is executing it will wait for another process to start the execution before that it cannot start okay that is the main thing for FIFO and here we use a pipe so in pipe we have the uh, an array of two uh, spaces first is um, means whatever you want to write here that will be written in the second one like f of 0 this is f of 0 this is f of 1 okay if the process executes successfully the process can read from the f of 0 means first uh, space and write it to f of uh, 1 which is the second space okay next we have the symbolic link uh, file apis it's an indirect pointer not like a direct pointer it will point indirectly let's see how it is it's um, used for uh, mainly for the directory files and it always refers to the latest version of the file to which they link okay so some of the operations which we can perform are uh, sim link read link and else stat okay this will link to the system this will read the link and this will uh, show the status so these are accessed indirectly like the address will not be specified but where you are present based on that the next file will be accessed okay so that is the main function for symbolic link and the hard link means there will be an absolute address means where we have to access from and this difference is very important from exam point of view the difference between uh, hard link and symbolic link okay next we have the unix process process we all know what it is it's a method of performing a task and there are eight types of uh, termination of a process like uh, the first five are the normal and uh, the rest uh, three are the exceptions okay so let's see the uh, eight ways the first one is return from a main function it will terminate the program and calling the exit function or calling underscore exit or underscore capital e exit and return from the last thread from the start routine call the p thread exit from the last thread okay in this ways we can exit the function and this will be discussing in more detail in the upcoming topics and here we have the um, other ways like exceptions like uh, calling abort and receipt of a signal means whenever a program is uh, processing some information here at that time if it, uh, if it receives a signal from the uh, cpu that um, it has to abort the program which it's uh, executing at that time it has to uh, stop the program that's known as a signal and response from the last thread to our cancellation request okay thread means a uh, part of the process okay in a part of the process if it uh, accepts the uh, cancellation request it will abort the process which is executing okay so these are the uh, main eight main ways of uh, terminating a process and to exit a function we have exit and exit uh, exit with capital e and return okay so let's see what it means see here this is the how our c program starts and then we have mainly six ways one two three four five six okay and this is the exit function here each of the exit function from here is just calling this function and here we have both the ways okay so let's discuss what is uh, each of these this is the user function this is the main function and c startup routine okay these are the inbuilt functions here except the user function it can call the exit function directly okay and here we have the exit handler and here we have the input output okay whenever exit handler is called or uh, input output is taken at that time it should get uh, uh, it should just exit the program for a specific amount of time okay for that we use uh, the call and return method okay so when the um, uh, process is over it should uh, resume the execution so we have the return statement also okay and finally all are connected with the kernel for the operation okay and what is command line arguments command line arguments means what type of uh, function you want to perform that can be uh, specified using the command line arguments and the environment list is a list where we have the all the paths available uh, which the uh, system uses more frequently like the home path shell user and so on okay it's um, ending with the null character it's stored in the form of a uh, stack so here it uh, it will each of the block will be pointing to a uh, separate environment variable and this whole thing is known as a list okay and this list address stored in the pointer which is pointing to the 
uh, main list here okay and let's uh, just uh, revise the uh, knowledge about the uh, memory layout of c program this we have already discussed many times so what is a uh, memory layout of uh, c program we have the text uh, segment here which is the main code and initialized uh, data segments means the variables which we have initialized and uninitialized uh, data segment which are not initialized yet and we have the stack here to store the automatic variables and the function return types and here we have the heap to store the dynamic memory allocation okay so this is the structure of c program we have uh, four main things code stack uh, code stack and heap here along with the um, along with the uh, data segments here okay and coming to shared libraries uh, shared libraries will have just a single um, piece of code which will be accessed by all the users okay so each of the user need not uh, make a new library means a copy of the new library it can access directly from the main library okay and these are the memory allocation functions malloc will just allocate a particular uh, size of the memory calloc will allocate the size of the memory but specified with a number of bits okay means malloc is this one and calloc is this one it will have the specific amount of bits okay and realloc means it will change the size either more or less okay it can um, be increased or decreased and we have some alternate uh, memory allocators in unix like library malloc provides a set of interfaces quick fit uh, quick fit which is the best fit means um, how much memory is actually required that much only will be allocated okay and lastly we have the allocation function which is uh, the memory is allocated from the stack instead of a heap usually we have the heap to allocate the memory but if the heap is full at that time we can call this function to allocate the memory from the stack okay and environment variables are those variables which are used by the system frequently like the environment list what all uh, path it has and in that path what are the variables required that will be stored in the environment variable the for, uh, the syntax is the name and the value means the variable name and the variable value like uh, is the same as the normal variable and here it's environment because it's used in the system environment and and we have the get uh, function and the set function and the put function like it's uh, it's same as the variable just uh, just it's used for the system so it's known as uh, environment variable and the syntax is here and these are some of the variables uh, commands which are used to get the columns date and the home language and so on okay and sometimes we need uh, to go from one program to another program so what we can do is we can't directly go we need a label okay so for that we are set uh, we are using set jump and long jump functions wherever we want to go we have to mark that point as set jump so if we are at uh, some other location what we can do is long jump function so that will take us from the um, existing means uh, current location to the to the point where the set jump function is specified okay and the program execution will start from there okay that's the main use of uh, set jump and long jump functions here's the syntax we have the um, uh, parameters as the jump buffer and the environment variables so jump buffer uh, jump buffer will have the data of uh, which part of the program you are going to jump and the environment variable will have the data to be processed okay and as we know the resources are not unlimited so there is a limit to set for each resource we can use the get r and set r limit for the setting of the resources how much we can use this is the syntax for get r and set r here we have two types of limit hard limit and soft limit the hard limit is the outer limit and the soft limit is the inner limit okay by using these both we can allocate each limit for the resources which we want like uh, cpu or the storage space and some of the examples of those uh, resources are like cpu data file size and memory lock okay and as we know that the kernel is the main part of the uh, programming system so what uh, kernel does is it has a organized way of handling the process it has the kernel table as well as the process table as you can see here so uh, by using the process table and the kernel table it will handle the uh, process in an efficient manner so here we have all the different categories for the text data and the stack and the file descriptor table so it will handle the process in a very uh, very efficient manner that's the main uh, aim of the uh, unix kernel support uh, so kernel has a great way of uh, organizing the things and uh, yeah that's uh, pretty much about the kernel uh, support for the process and moving on we have the process control so we have some identifiers to get the process or get the parent process get the user id and so on okay so these are the different types of the things which we can obtain to have the control of the process and we have the for function for function means there is a function a suppose and if you fork it we will get the same duplicate of a and we can perform changes on it okay so this is the um, syntax for it and we have the 
um, we have the child copy of the parent when we fork it and it's the same uh, copy and what uh, does uh, child copy do is when we call a function from child copy it will be just called once but it will return the value twice why because it will uh, call the function once but when it's returning the value it will return from the parent first then the uh, then from the child okay so it will return twice and what is uh, file sharing file sharing will have the parent process here and child process and we'll have different files here okay each one will be accessing the same files because it's the same process child and parent and each one will have a vnode table here okay provided by the kernel so it will um, keep all the data which uh, which are used here and it acts as a cache so it's uh, more efficient in uh, file sharing for the kernel process okay and while sharing the file there are a few uh, uh, key points to be kept in mind it is important that the parent and the child uh, child uh, share the same offset that means uh, pointer reference in the file if it's different means um, if the child is pointing to some other uh, place in the file and the parent is pointing to, uh, parent is pointing to some other place at that time the conflicts can happen okay so that's the uh, that's one thing and second is that they can make changes to the standard output standard input and standard error only okay means these are the three uh, things in which they can make their changes okay that's about the second key point and coming to third key point there are two ways of handling the file uh, description after fork either the parent waits for the child process to complete means it will wait for the child uh, changes whatever it makes to complete it or else they can move in uh, both different ways okay means the parent can perform whatever the functions it needs and the child can perform its own functions okay so that's the two ways of handling the uh, files after the fork and in case the fork fails what uh, what might be the reasons the two reasons are that uh, there might be too many process or too many process ids okay so in these two uh, scenarios the fork uh, function can fail and the two uses of fork are when a, uh, a process wants to duplicate itself so that the parent and the child can execute different sections that's the first use and second is that uh, when a process wants to execute when a process wants to execute different programs okay that's the two uses of a fork so if one wants to utilize a virtual memory in a fork we can use v fork instead of a fork okay and exit functions we already discussed these are the ways like returning from a main function and all so this has already been discussed like it's uh, just a bit more uh, detailed and here we have the wait and wait PID function. This is very important from exam point of view. Now see here, what is wait and what is wait PID? Wait is a function which uh, waits for the child process to complete, whereas wait, wait PID doesn't wait, okay? That's the only difference. It will just wait before a function is completed, okay? That's the basic um, function behind the uh, wait functions, okay? So um, there are some ways to customize it like uh, by using the wait if exited, wait if signaled, wait if stopped. That means based on a condition, a, a process will wait, okay? And the second difference is that wait PID will uh, wait for one particular function, okay? It will wait for just one particular function and the wait function will return any of the function which is terminated, okay? So wait PID is for specific uh, function and wait, and wait is for any general function, okay? And the third one is the wait ID function, which is similar to wait PID, but it has some uh, extra functions which are discussed here. And before that, let's uh, see the syntax of it. PID, PGID, and PALL. Okay, these are the three ID types. These are the three ID types, the process ID, group process ID, and wait for any child process. Okay. And we have the other arguments like uh, wait if uh, continued, wait exited, wait no hang, wait no wait, and so on. Okay. So by using these functions, we can wait until a function gets over. After that, we can start the new function, okay? And we have the wait3 and wait4 function. That's uh, basically for the, for the returning of the summary of what uh, the resources were used. It is not for the waiting purpose, but uh, for the return of the uh, uh, summary of what all uh, resources were used. Like uh, you can consider it as a stat uh, stat uh, status of the uh, function which was performed, okay? So this is the syntax here, wait3 and wait4. Both of these has a similar uh, syntax. It's uh, used for the uh, different conditions, okay? And uh, race condition means that two processes are trying to access the same file, okay? So what happens is when a child process and parent process, because uh, when we fork it, it the parent process, it uh, makes a duplicate copy of itself, which is a child process, okay? So it's uh, obvious that it will point to the same file and it will try to access the same file together, okay? So it will uh, make some conflicts there. So let's see how the function is implemented. We, uh, here we have written the three uh, conditions like if a PID of fork is uh, equal at that time system error, else if it's zero, it's output from the child, 
else it out uh, else its output from the parent okay so what happens is that uh, when we do the for loop here for the function the output from the child and parent will uh, come um, next to each other okay so there will be conflicts in the program so uh, to avoid that what we can do is we can use tell and wait functions okay so tell uh, and wait function means we have the pid here for wait parent means when this is getting output it will um, make the parent function wait and next when the uh, parent uh, function is output it will tell the child that it can output the um, whatever it wants to output okay in that way we can uh, do a synchronization between the parent and the child and so that there will be no conflicts in the program okay exec function is a very important concept from exam point of view exec means uh, execution function okay when a process calls one of the exec function that process is completely replaced by the new program okay sometimes you want to execute a new program right now okay right at the moment so at that time what we can do is call exec functions okay it will start the program from the main function and it doesn't change anything like the process id and all just the process resources will change okay like the test data heap data and the stack okay and we have some of the uh, functions like uh, to customize as our need is like these two replaces the data in the process and these two override the data in the process and here we have the uh, duplicating the data in the process and the main thing is that the process id does not change after uh, uh, an exec is called but uh, some additional parameters are inherited like uh, process id and parent process real user id and real group supplementary group and so on okay so these are the inherited uh, parameters and rest all the things remain same and among the six functions three are for data and three are for uh, process okay so when once the data is uh, ready it will uh, be sent to the process for the data to be processed and uh, after that the final system call will be made from exe ve okay and whenever we want to write any program for any function this is the main syntax which you have to keep in mind first write if pid is equal to fork then it's a fork error else if uh, uh, means whatever uh, the id is here if it's uh, less than zero there we have to output something else if it's zero we have to output something okay this will depend upon the type of the function but this is the basic syntax okay so yeah that's uh, pretty much about the module 3 of unix now let's uh, discuss the previous equations in the previous equations uh, it might be mixed but uh, let's see what it is the first uh, is not from our module and here we have the save and exit commands we have discussed in the uh, module discussion and the three files standard files it's in module 2 it seems like the in the previous year um, in the previous schemes the module uh, two topics were covered in module 3 so we have the uh, questions here okay but these all topics are uh, discussed in a great depth in uh, module 2 so you can refer to the module 2 video okay and this is also about the wildcard means it's just the specifications of how we want to output the values okay and various x mode commands and here we have the commands for the output like lsl and all i think the uh, most of the things uh, mentioned here are from module 2 but uh, basically the main things no i guess all it's what all is mentioned is about the module 2 what all is mentioned is about the uh, mainly about the module 2 so let's uh, see in the next module if there is any question regarding the module 3 and that's all for this uh, video and thank you for watching and see you in the next one